everyone. I am Jeff McCurley. I am here to give you some story time today for the littles and maybe the not so littles like myself. Um, I do have a 16 year old daughter, so I had to do some digging around for some books that really meant a lot to all of us. Hi, Allison and Sophia. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm here with the um, Atlanta Artists Emergency Relief Volunteers, and we're going to be doing some reading today um, for all the littles out there and the not so littles, like myself, as I just said. So I don't know how long this is going to take. I hope you stay the whole time. If you can't, you know, you can come and go as you want to. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Dan Bowman. Hi, Becky Cormier. <clears throat> all right. So my first book that I'm reading today is called Tell Me What It's Like to Be Big, and it's by Joyce Dunbar and Debbie Gliori. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm also streaming this on my own Facebook page, so, um, you know, it's all over the place. Hi, Janie Cormier. Hello. <clears throat> okay, so Tell Me What It's Like to Be Big. Morning peeped through the window. Willa was first to wake up. She put on her jumpsuit this way and that way until it was right. Then Willa put on her chicken slippers. See right there, chicken slippers. And went downstairs to have breakfast. No one else was around. She tried to reach the bread and the honey and the oats and the milk and the apples. She tried this way and that way, but Willa couldn't reach. Look at her chicken slippers. Back she went upstairs. Willoughby, she called, are you awake? I am now, said Willoughby. I'm hungry, said Willa. Then go and get something to eat. I can't reach, said Willa. Will you come and reach for me? Willoughby sighed. Okay, pass me my slippers. Hi, Paige Sebring. Chicken slippers. Paul in Paul, Willoughby and Willa went downstairs. You can reach because you're big, said Willa. That's right, said Willoughby, and one day you'll be big too. Will I, asked Willa. Then they both settled down to eat breakfast. I'm gonna show you the picture. It's a little glare, sorry. How big will I be, asked Willa. Oh, very big, said Willoughby. Will I be bigger than you, asked Willa. No, said Willoughby. Why? asked Willa. Because I got started first, said Willoughby, and I'll go on getting bigger too. That means you can wash the dishes, said Willa. Mm, sort of, said Willoughby. Tell me what it's like to be big, said Willa. Well, you can do lots of things, said Willoughby. What things, asked Willa. You'll be able to reach the lamp by yourself when you're big, said Willoughby. Will I, said Willa. Oh, yes, yeah, said Willoughby. And when you're really big, nearly as big as I'll be, you might be able to reach the moon in a rocket. What else will I do when I'm big, asked Willa. I hate the glare. Mm. Look, there's the, there's the rocket lava lamp. Kind of cool and red, huh? <clears throat> You'll be able to stand in the shower like me and turn it on by yourself, said Willoughby. Will I, said Willa. You'll be able to reach for a towel and get dried by yourself, said Willoughby. Will I, said Willa. You'll be able to brush your own teeth without any help, said Willoughby. And will Spotty Ted brush his, asked Willa. He hasn't got any teeth, said Willoughby. And that's spotty Ted right there at Willa's feet. <clears throat> ah. So, will I have to make my own bed, asked Willa? Will I have to tidy my own toys? 
Oh, you won't have any toys, will it be? It'll be too big for toys. Will it be, said Willow. What is it? asked Willoughby. I don't ever want to be big. Why not? asked Willoughby. I always want my toys, said Willow. I always want mine too, said Willoughby. But we won't mind, you see. We'll have grown up things instead. But then I might have to do grown up things, said Willow. Like what? asked Willoughby. Like go out the door all by myself, like walk down the road all by myself, like be in the world all by myself. There might be nobody there. Spotty Ted will be there, said Willoughby. You can keep him forever if you like. But I might not fit into my chicken slippers anymore, said Willow. Well, then you could have some hippo slippers like mine or some pom-pom slippers like Mom's, said Willoughby. I know. Let's go see if Mom's awake. She wasn't. But they climbed in bed beside her anyway. This is very early morning, she yawned, looking at the clock. Why don't we just snuggle up for a while? Mom, said Willa, were you ever small? I was, said Mom, smaller even than you. And I, was I small too, asked Willoughby. To me, you still are, said Mom. Tell us, Mom, said Willoughby, tell us what you did when you were small. Well, if I woke up too early in the morning, I went back to sleep, said Mom. Why don't we do that? And they did. And there they are. And that is the end of Tell Me What It's Like to Be Big. <laughs> Paige, I love your, uh, your comments there. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right. <clears throat> okay, so that was, that was number one. This is going by so fast. I, I thought it was going to be like more laborious than it is, but I'm really enjoying myself. Okay, so this is one of my favorites called Gabby the Shrew. It is by Alpha Betty Olson and Marshall Efron, illustrated by Roz Chast. Chaste. Chast. Ch Chast. And now you hear my wife in the background. All right. <clears throat> So this is Gabby the Shrew. It's one of my favorites, and you'll understand why uh, in just a second. <clears throat> Gabby the Shrew. A few weeks ago, Gabby, a baby shrew as big as a plum pit, awoke hungry as usual. And his mom, who was as big as a peach pit, served him his usual breakfast a meal that was bigger than he was. He ate a couple of crunchy crickets, a group of juicy grasshoppers, one fresh frog, a pair of slippery salamanders, several tasty moths, a pack of peppery millipedes, a squishy centipede, a number of succulent beetles, a few chewy worms, and other assorted creepies, crawlers, and wingies of various flavors. Gabby finished every bit of his breakfast, but it wasn't enough. Thank you, Mom! I'd like another helping! He shouted, because shrews never whisper when they can shout, never shout when they can shriek, and if they can holler, they like it even better. That's the way shrews are. Your command is my desire! I'll go hunt some more slimies! screamed Gabby's mom. See you later! Gabby and his mom made such a racket that the leaves shivered on the trees, the clouds overhead floated away, the flowers in the neighborhood closed up for the night in the morning, and an owl in the tree above woke up and fainted from the noise. But Gabby and his mom didn't care, because they were shrews. <laughs> The moment Gabby's mom left, Gabby's stomach growled. If we go out now, it rumbled, 
I bet we find good grub right away. Do you think so? shrieked Gabby, and somewhere a buttercup melted. Definitely, whispered his stomach. Okay, let's go! yelled Gabby so loudly that a forget-me-not forgot everything she had been told not to forget. Gabby leaped through the door and ran up the dirt tunnel till he was out on the floor of the forest. It was the first time little Gabby had ever left the cozy hole in the ground he called home. Wow! screamed Gabby, looking a fern in the face. This is nice! Uh-oh, said a ladybug. I hear a shrew coming on. Quick, let's go to California, said her children. And so they did. So did every other insect for miles around. When Gabby sniffed the air and tried to catch a whiff of something he could eat, the air was empty. Gabby started walking. I'll eat anything that's food, he boomed. Me too, said his stomach. Gabby came to a big black stone dripping with moss and covered with mud. Gabby crunched a bite out of it and chewed. Poo! he yelled. This isn't food. food! It's as hard as a rock, growled his stomach. <laughs> Thanks, sis. My sister is watching. <clears throat> Gabby walked and walked. And he walked as he and as he walked. Time marched on ahead of him, in the af and the afternoon ran out. We've been out for hours and hours, and we haven't seen one critter we can eat! Where did they all go? shouted Gabby, and the last two lightning bugs left in the forest shouted out and went dark for a duration. Don't ask me. I'm down here. I can't see anything, rumbled his stomach. Gabby climbed a wall, a tall, straight pine tree. When he got to the top, he saw a house at the edge of the forest. There it is, the house at the edge of the forest. The door of the house opened, and Gabby heard a woman's voice call out, Billy Torkelson, time to eat! Did she say time to eat? boomed Gabby. That's what it sounded like to me, answered his stomach. Gabby jumped down from the tree, ran to the house, and walked in under the front door. He strode into the dining room and smiled, showing his tiny teeth. What's for dinner? He screeched in his sweetest ear-piercing voice. Then he rolled onto his back and waved his little feet in the air. A mouse with a loudspeaker! screamed Mrs. Torkelson. She covered her ears, ran from the room, and returned with the Torkelson cat, Sydney. You're a cat, Sydney, she said. Cats catch mice. Now go to work. He's too small to be a mouse, thought Sydney. He smells bad, and he's loud. That can mean only one thing. He's a shrew. This house is in trouble. Sydney ran out of the house and sat on top of the Torkelson's car. I'll be back, he meowed. I'm just not sure when. I'll get this mouse, said Mr. Torkelson. Where is it? There, Mrs. Torkelson pointed. Mr. Torkelson looked, but Gabby was gone. He was inside the terrarium, eating the head off a plastic dinosaur. He bellowed. That wasn't food! I liked it, but it was dry, said his stomach. Then Gabby ate all of the curly cues in the rug. Those worms were very hairy, he screamed. I didn't like them, said his stomach. Don't send me any more. Go get him, wailed Mrs. Torkelson. But before Mr. Torkelson could get going, Gabby had run to the wallpaper and chewed half of the butterflies out of the pattern. Poo! howled Gabby. That wasn't food either! 
Mr. Torkelson snuck up behind Gabby with a fly swatter and raised it high in the air, but Gabby didn't notice because he was staring at the tassel on the window shade. A big fat spider with the long silky legs! Gabby shouted. Mr. Torkelson brought the fly swatter down as hard as he could, just as Gabby jumped onto the tassel and sank his sharp, pointy little teeth into it. The shade shot up and took Gabby with it. The shade unrolled and Gabby was dropped down. As soon as the shade dropped down, it rolled up again. It was a roller coaster, and when it ro rolled down, it was an unroller coaster. I'm getting upset, moaned Gabby's stomach. Look at him riding the shade. At that very moment, Gabby's mom arrived home with big bag of bugs. Dinner's here! She boomed sweetly. She braced herself for little Gabby's greeting, but there was none. My beautiful baby's gone! She shouted and sobbed and set out to look for Gabby. But back at the Torkelson house, the shade shot up and Gabby thundered, Help me! Louder than he'd ever thundered before. All the windows in the house shattered and the stairs fell in with a big crackling thunk. <coughs> Deep in the forest, Gabby's mom stopped in her tracks and listened. Kabam! That's my Gabby! She bellowed and she began to run. Gabby's mom reached the Torkelson house. She saw the porch detach itself and crumble into dust. Then she noticed the shade that was rolling up and down. My baby is in that house! I knew it! She shrilled. Help! Blared Gabby. The big chandelier in the entrance hall fell from the ceiling and exploded on the floor with a terrible crash and the sound of a thousand tinkles. Gabby's mom climbed through a broken window. Her whiskers bristled. Her tiny eyes darted fire. Give me back my son! She raged at the Torkelsons. Who's keeping him? asked Mr. Torkelson. We don't want him, said Mrs. Torkelson. Nobody needs a loud mouse, said Billy. He's not a loud mouse! He's a shrew! Gabby's mom proclaimed proudly. Well, nobody needs a loud shrew either! shouted the Torkelsons, and the chimney fell in, and the fireplace blew out, and the roof came apart in many places. Take your teeth out of the tassel, Gabby, darling, screamed Gabby's mom. We're going home. Goodbye and good riddance, shouted the Torkelsons, and the wall of their house split open. Thank you very much, shrieked Gabby's mom, and Gabby and his mom walked out through the jagged crack, crossed the lawn, and entered the forest, heading for home. Deep in the woods, where everything alive was fast asleep and everything was very dark, Gabby yodeled a loud, jolly song. I love a big bug. I love an insect. I love a worm. Pipe down, yelled a mouse, a fox, a rabbit, a turtle, a groundhog, a raccoon, a porcupine, and an entire ant colony. I love the sweet moth for dessert. I love my mom. I love myself. I love my stomach. My stomach loves me sang Gabby, who didn't care because he was a shrew. Every living creature in the forest screamed, Gabby, shut up! <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm a shrew! sang 
Gabby in his loudest voice. Suddenly, the moon in the sky over, overhead broke with a giant shiver. <laughs> Millions of tiny moon bits fell to the earth lit, and lit up the forest. Uh-oh! yelled Gabby. Did I do something bad? Of course not, dear! screamed Gabby's mom. We'll get a new moon! And the, at the end of the month, we always do! In that case, I won't worry! bellowed Gabby. Let's go home! So Gabby and his mother walked home, had a big snack, curled up together, and went to sleep. The end. Gabby the Shrew. Own it. <clears throat> Hi, Tommy Cox. <clears throat> Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm tired now. Okay, so the last, uh, the last book I have today for story time is called, it's one of Arden's favorites from when she was little. It's called Imagine a Night, and hopefully you'll be able to see the illustrations as well. It's a pretty simple, and it's kind of a quiet book, so <clears throat> you're welcome, Paige. It's my pleasure. <clears throat> um, Imagine a Night. By, uh, let's see. The, it has two things. It has uh, paintings by Rob Gonzalez and text by Sarah L. Thompson. <clears throat> Imagine a night. I'm going to show you this picture first. Imagine a night when snow white sheets grow crisp and cold and someone whispers, follow me. If you can see the pillows on the beds. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Imagine a night when you can't sleep and so you jump high enough to soar over a quilt of fields and forests. I think you can see that one okay, yeah? Imagine a night when a whistle echoes from an empty hall and a voice calls, all aboard! No ticket needed to travel to a place no one has seen. Imagine a night when, listen, you can hear a farmer play his fields to sleep, a lullaby for leaf and stem and dreaming root. Imagine a night when the darkness of meadow and lake feels too quiet and deep. And so you cut and stitch a city from the starry sky. It's one of my favorite ones, if you can see it. Let's see. See him cutting the sky, making the skyline. <clears throat> Imagine a night when drifts of moonlight take on shape and form, and you look over your shoulder to find you're not alone. Isn't that cool? I love that. Imagine a night when you might find that gravity doesn't work quite as you expected Look at them riding up the stairs. Imagine a night. Blair, okay, here we go. Imagine a night when candlelight rises on butterfly wings to greet the lonely stars. Imagine a night when moonlit moon 
Try again. Imagine a night when moonlight spills across the water to make a path for the lightest feet. Hi, Julianne Ullman. <clears throat> Imagine a night when velvet darkness hangs at every window so that our dreams will never end. This is another one of my favorites. Imagine a night when a new partner joins the stately dance of moon around earth and earth around sun. Imagine a night when you take just one last ride. Beneath you, the hill grows steep and your wheels grow wings. Imagine a night when the space between words becomes like space between trees, wide enough to wander in. I'm gonna show you that one. Isn't that cool how the floor becomes the trees? <clears throat> Imagine a night when a snowfall tucks you in and the evening star kisses you asleep. Imagine tonight. And that is the end of that. And all of these, it just it tells you what the names of all of the pictures are at the end. Thank you for joining me for my story time today. I had a great time. I hope you did too. And please share this video with people that you think might enjoy it. And if you get a chance, go to the Atlanta Artists Emergency Relief volunteer page. And if you have any extra money lying around that you can spare, they can certainly use it for all of these artists who are currently out of work, not uh, being able to continue their shows. Thanks for joining me. I love you all. Mwah. See you soon. Next Thursday, maybe.